Thanks for clicking on to Vogan's European Outlook for Sunday the 9th of October. I want to take uh, this opportunity this evening to speak a little bit about my thinking towards the upcoming winter season and, um, you know, a couple of things that um, have been on my mind in the, in the last wee while. I've been really, I suppose I've been kind of struggling with the, the whole idea of a, a long-range winter forecast based on the fact that it was a bit of a disaster last year and of course all aspects kind of seem to come together with the solar with the um the la nina and whatnot the sea surface temperatures uh, the easterly qbo um you know several different aspects came together which kind of suggested that winter would be uh, a pretty decent one last year and uh, in fact it was quite the opposite and i suppose over the last decade or so of doing these long-range forecasts some are are very good some are okay some can be a disaster and um there was seemingly good potential back last december and then of course everything went um to pot really um in the run-up to christmas and new year and uh, we were so close but yet so far and then of course we went into the month of january and february and the polar vortex just continued to strengthen and we had a very, very warm and wet winter overall. Now, of course, we are well in the ascendancy of, uh, of solar cycle 25 that can bring um, several different, uh, you know, it's very difficult to gauge what kind of a winter you may have based on a solar cycle which you know back several years ago i believe that you know during solar minimums you would typically find that uh, there would be more high latitude blocking there would be colder winters um for the uk and, and, and especially in europe overall and then of course solar maximums you tend to find that there would be slightly less um cold and potentially even warmer and stormier winters of course the oceans in the last decade the last 20 years even have been continuing to warm and therefore the parameters in terms of aspects that you would look towards for a winter forecast it, it, it's the waters are a little bit more murky in terms of long-range forecasts when you've got an overall warmer ocean and atmosphere so therefore it makes this winter very very difficult to pinpoint my hunch would be swaying towards warmer than normal based on the fact that the long-term trend has been leaning more and more towards warmer than normal overall for the uk and indeed for europe it has been a super warm year through the first nine months of the year and so therefore you would say to yourself what really would give you reason to believe that all of a sudden we're going to see a flip around taking place however 2010 seen that was seen a tremendously hot summer seemingly off the scale hot summer across russia the winter that followed was one of the coldest on record sometimes it can be a kind of rubber band effect where something gives and we do see a turnaround taking place what has been interesting is how warm the the northern hemisphere summer has been the arctic sea ice is is in pretty good shape we are starting to see the snow cover across Eurasia increase day by day, as you would expect at this time of the year. But that is in pretty good shape as well. We've seen years, even 2009, 10, 11. Most of those years are actually behind this year in terms of Eurasian snow cover. And sometimes I struggle with the whole you know, increase in, in Eurasian snow cover during the month of October. Leads to high latitude blocking and whatnot. Um, I, I struggle sometimes to buy into that that theory overall, but um, you know when you've got a tremendous buildup of 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 ocean heat content, especially across the northern ocean basins, does that have an impact on the atmosphere within the high latitudes? Possibly, um, but I do think that this is going to be an interesting winter, a difficult winter to call. We are seeing a, an unusual weakening early on of the polar vortex and uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But 
you know, it, it's very, very difficult. It's becoming even more difficult in a sense to do long range forecasting. It's, you know, it's always been hard, especially across the UK, across the northwest of Europe, warm ocean uh, up against, um, you know, a, a, a large land mass. And of course, you've got all the, the, the ingredients coming together. You're almost at the crossroads between the pole and the, uh, the equator in this latitude. So there's so many different aspects that, that make British forecasting extremely difficult. And I think with a warmer overall planet, um, it is becoming harder to call. Cold is definitely not just going to disappear, you know, um, and I think we do have the potential even in, in 2022-23 to see some, uh, some exceptional cold. That is definitely very much on the table, and I believe that will be the case this upcoming year. But when you take in the, in the account the 90-day period, 1st of December through the, the, 30, uh, you know, the end of, of, Mar uh, of, of February, sorry, uh, I think overall it's going to be lean warmer than normal again. I could be wrong, you know, but I'm I'm going to be very, very, very reluctant to forecast a cold winter this year. Um, but you know, westerly QBO, you know, zonal winds high up above the equatorial region. Uh, you know, westerly um, QBO tends to lean, you know, arguably towards a uh, you know increase in in jet stream winds in the middle altitudes. But that's not always the case. We've had plenty of cold winters, plenty of extreme cold spells in Wesley QBO winters. Equally, we've had a warm winter during a, a, a seemingly more favourable easterly QBO when winds are, are running east to west against um, the, 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 the normal flow. So pinpointing aspects and going by certain ingredients doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the forecast right. So interesting enough, basically the polar vortex is, is weakening. Blame any kind of reason, man Julian oscillation, tropics, heat wave in China, for example. Who knows? But we are seeing a weakening of the of the polar vortex, both at 10 HPA and that's tr trickling down to 50 HPA. And this is the current setup at 10 HPA. You can see here this kind of banana shape of blue indicating the polar vortex is stretched and it's not, you know, strong zonal winds uh, at 10 HPA aren't, aren't roaring. We're actually seeing a weakening. We're seeing a displacement off the pole. And even at 50 HPA, we're seeing uh, warming taking place here. You notice here within... The, uh, that level of the Arctic atmosphere here, we have got um, less cold. Uh, so therefore, you notice here the cold at 50 HPA is spread out down into the low latitude region. So this is interesting here. This is something that I would be keeping a close eye on. The reason why is because the, the, the Arctic Oscillation has went firmly rocketed into strong positive. But notice here it's going back towards neutral. But look at the North Atlantic Oscillation. It's expected to go from neutral into negative. And if you notice here, according to the CFSV2, week one, strong zonal uh, flow at the moment, uh, strong uh, negative uh, over Iceland, strong positive over the Azores. Notice here as we go through the remainder of October, it's starting to show a change, strong positive now starting to congregate over the central North Atlantic, negative over top. But notice here that as we go and move into the month of November, those positives are starting to go up towards Greenland and towards the Arctic region here. And you notice here that there's an area of white neutral height seen by the model uh, during the, uh, the, you know, uh, close to the UK. And of course, as we go into the month of November, Notice here there's a trough now uh, showing up over Scandinavia, a ridge North Atlantic extent up towards uh, towards Greenland here. Uh, so it's indicative of a negative NAO signal here. Now if you notice here, this is the November forecast off the CFSV2, and it's very interesting. It's showing a negative over the UK, positive over the North Atlantic extent up towards Greenland. That's a negative NAO signal, folks. 
And it's Joe Bastardi that says about the, 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 the late season tropical activity can lead to early winter over eastern North America and over Europe here. And it starts to beg the question, are we going to see something? The, the models are hinting at something during the the middle portion of this month and, and on to, into the end of the month. Turns stormy, but we're also going to see colder conditions coming down from the north, possibly. That may change, but you get the overall idea. Weakening the polar vortex, is this the response? Down 500 millibars and lower than that. And Joe has always portrayed that, you know, if you get an early taste of, 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 of negative Arctic oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation during the month of October, that can repeat itself later down the road, whether it be the end of November or on into December. And what my point really I'm trying to get at here is, is this an indicator? Is this a pointer of, of possible pattern as we go towards the early portion of the winter season it's going to be very interesting to see that we've got a system going in to uh, central america um you know and there's going to be more uh, potential tropical activity as we go forward here but this is um the the, the, the 50 hpa temperatures as you can see here uh, within the lower portion of the stratosphere if you go out to, to 240 hours which is uh, a, a fair wee bit out we're still seeing a lack of congregation of cold polar vortex within the lower stratosphere, possibly even into the, the upper portion of the troposphere. So that indicates the continuation of possible weakening, weakness in the polar vortex here. And that is something that we'll need to keep a close eye on, I think. Madden Julian oscillation is also quite interesting, by the way, because um, We've got um, a large scale sinking over North America and the Atlantic, a large scale upward motion over the Pacific. But notice here as I play through the loop, we start to see the eastward pro propagation of this Man Julian oscillation pulse. We reverse it all together and we see large scale sinking over the Pacific and large scale downward motion over at least a, a chunk of, of the Atlantic here. So we're seeing a change, a large-scale change in the Madden Julian oscillation. Is that the potential driver to things? You know, is it is a kind of chicken or the egg kind of scenario? What drives what? I don't know, but um, it's all very interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see, do we see some sort of a cold spell at some point over the next couple of weeks? We'll probably see a pullback. But therefore, we may see a return of something similar during the early portion of this upcoming winter season here. So these are just thoughts and ideas that I've got this Sunday evening. And uh, I just wanted to share it with you here. Very complex. And I certainly do not portray to know a great deal. But, you know, over the last, the best part of, uh, of 25 years, I've spent uh, a lot of time trying to study the atmosphere of the world and um you know i probably know very little even to this day but this is just my interpretation of what i think is going on at the moment but certainly it's going to be worth keeping an eye on i think as we go forward here so that's it for today i do appreciate you watching hope you're, you've enjoyed your weekend it's not quite over yet um so enjoy the rest of your evening thanks for watching please like share and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so Bye for now.